Well, hello, it is a new week and we have brand new patch notes for Phasmophobia. Dagenmar here and we're going to be going over this week's latest patch notes in Phasmophobia beta, analyzing what it means for your upcoming games. Over here on the left, I have Arrow Blue. Hello. And over here on my right, I have Masaya. Hi. The first round of patch notes we have ties into the parabolic microphone, uh, which... You know, people have wanted to love in this game for a while, but for the most part, I feel like it's kind of been more or less useless. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but I really, I really like this because uh, it seems like the dev is uh, really trying to uh, improve it and make it a lot more useful. So uh, here we have increased the parabolic microphone distance from 10 to 30 meters and the width from three to six meters. And I like how specific he gets. He says... Uh, this is supposed to be used to give you the general direction the, of the ghost and not exactly where it is. Uh, sometimes, like, he'll put something in the patch notes and it's, like, very cryptic or, you know, you're not really sure, like, what's meant or what the idea behind it was or anything. But sometimes he puts these patch notes in where he just, like, explains exactly why he's doing the change, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like when they do that. Like, I want to know why things are changed, why the change is happening, um, why was it bad before, why is it good now? Uh, stuff like that is always very interesting to me. I've, yeah. I've got to be honest, I want to like this, but I don't know. I just feel like this itself is, is not really going to change that much of how useful it actually is. Maybe in some of the larger locations, but even then, I think it's not really going to be that much help, personally. I mean, I don't really use the parabolic, so I can't really, you know, say, but I don't know. I would argue that this, combined with the recent thermometer changes, makes this a lot more useful. You could technically, theoretically, find the ghost a lot faster with these parabolic changes than you could even with the thermometer. Yeah, like I said, I want to, like like it don't get me wrong and i suppose it i'll test it out and see but i just not really caring for this one <laughs> yeah it's not enough it's not enough yeah. like it's it's like another tool for finding the ghost room but are these buffs enough to make the mic that useful now essentially so this week's patch notes also included that they reduced the size of the parabolic microphone model give you a better view on non-VR. I don't have any experience in VR, so I kind of struggle to know how much of a difference this is. How about any of you? Well, I mean, I played it in VR. I mean, it just, like in VR, you can have anything out of your field of view because it's like real movements, right? I can tell you for sure that in non-VR, this thing was obnoxiously <laughs> large. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I felt like I felt like I was carrying around a like a giant satellite dish. Are you just happy to see me? Or is that a parabolic microphone? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, like I mean I it was it was obnoxious, right? Like I remember I tried to use it once in uh asylum. And it would take up like literally forty percent of the screen, and I, I don't, I really don't think that's an exaggeration. It was about, it was, all, I felt like I was like, wow, it's taking up almost half my screen right now. Like, what in the world, you know? So this is yeah, a very welcome change. Like needing to change what tool you you're holding just because the one you were using is in the way and you can't see. That's just bad, you know? Yeah, that sucks. Agreed. So could change. Yeah. Coming up next, we have remove the temperature objective due to the temperature changes. Now, uh, this specific change happened because we have a bunch of temperature related changes uh, coming up next involving the temperatures of the rooms of the building and how the thermometer works. It, we actually encountered this uh, last weekend when we were playing, pretty much pretty much right after our, our last video on Phasmophobia patch notes got published. You know, we we got into the game and like in the first five seconds, like it crossed off that objective. I was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, we was laughing pretty hard about it as well. It's like, oh, look, there's objective done. We haven't even entered the building. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was nice. Exactly. 
Exactly. Easy money, easy money. Essentially, essentially good for me. I die a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so now all rooms will start with slightly different temperatures, right? So um, now they have it to where, uh, you know, the temperature rises and falls based on whether or not the power is on or off. We went over that last week. Now it's going to start at slightly different, at slightly different temperatures, which will make it, I think, a lot harder to pinpoint that ghost right off the bat. Because, you know, once you turn on the, once you turn on the power, you know, if the room, the, if the next room is like slightly colder now, now is not necessarily going to mean it's the ghost room. Now it just means that, you know, it maybe that's just how it is. So you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to find that ghost now, I think. I think this is a good change, but I think this is also going to add to quite a lot of confusion. It's going to require not just double checking, yeah. but maybe triple checking stuff. Yeah. Like, Chaos! <laughs> is this room getting warmer? Oh, is this the ghost room? And then you come back yeah. like two minutes later and like, okay, so it's warmed up ever so slightly. So this week on the patch notes, we also got that if the power is off, the temperature in every room will now slowly drop to 5 Celsius or 41 Fahrenheit. Alternatively, though, if the power is on, the temperature in every room will slowly raise unless the ghost is in the room, where it will still drop. This, I feel, is going to make the game a lot harder, and I think it's a welcome change, especially on, like, professional, you know, because the game had been getting a little bit easy. Way yeah, too easy, yeah. Pro, e pro experts over here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that any any change that's going to adjust the difficulty of the game is going to be a welcome change because, you know, the game's too easy, it gets stale, right? Alternatively, mm -hmm. you make it too hard, people get frustrated and they go leave and play something else. So it's a careful balance. I do think that overall, though, this is definitely a good change because those temperatures made it way too easy in the beginning to to find the ghost for sure. Yeah, and I do like that this change makes turning on the po power more meaningful. Like, the power has more purpose now, essentially. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, a, it's a, I mean, it has a dual purpose, right? So now the power being on and, by extension, having the lights turned on slower, it slows your uh, sanity drain, right? But now it also makes it easier for you to, you know, find the ghost. And so it's, it's a new facet. It's a new facet they've added onto the game. Um, mm -hmm. I think it makes it more dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Up next, we have lowered the speed that the ghost lowers the temperature in its room. I'll be honest with you. I don't know why this change is here. I don't know if it was lowering too quick before. Like, I don't know what gives here. It's probably just a tweak. Uh, it's probably just a tweak to make it slightly more challenging. It's another difficulty adjustment, which, again, yeah, I think is a good thing. Definitely <laughs> makes finding the uh, ghost room harder. Yeah. As a, I, as I, would be also, uh, I was going to say, I, I'd be interested to know how much the speed was lowered, though, right? Like, I, I wonder what the exact value is. Like, it, is this... Is this like a massive change or is it just a teeny tiny tweak? Because really, this is what I was talking about earlier with some of these patch notes. It's a little bit hard to tell. You have to be an oracle yeah. and you have to read the stars to figure out <laughs> what the developer did. <laughs> yeah. More detail would be nice. Yeah. I think what it means in the like is like when when a room is like let's say 15 degrees Celsius. And you're like, okay, this isn't the ghost room. And then you just go into the next room and suddenly it's like whoop, straight down to like zero. You know it's the ghost room kind of thing. Or if it's like instantly five, you know, I think between that and the light switching, um, yeah, I think it's going to be harder to find um, and make it a little bit more challenging instead of having that initial drop, you know? I agree. I mean, if you're talking the difference between like three degrees Celsius and like maybe 11 degrees um, you know, 11, that could be ambient, right? It, it maybe yeah. it hasn't lowered it enough yet. And you walk right past that thing, you know, that's not the ghost room. Well, you just made the game a lot harder. I think, I think that's a good thing for sure. I agree. Yeah, I completely. Agree. Welcome change. Mm -hmm. uh, also in this week's patch notes, also temperature related, each room will now lower and raise their temperature at slightly different speeds. 
So um, this adds a lot more variation and a lot more variability to the game. It's not all going to be the same. It's not all going to be lower, which again makes identifying that ghost room kind of difficult because it used yeah. to be the case that you would get the feel for the ambient temperature of the entire house. And then once mm -hmm. you find the room that was sufficiently far enough away from that average temperature in the house, it doesn't matter if it was cold enough or not. You just found the ghost room. So no more, no more. You're not so, going to be able to rely on that anymore. So when you put this mixed with the, the power box needing to be on and, you know, the power box fight, and you mix this in with the ghost changing the temperature ever so slightly and the delay with the thermometer, this is going to make this a lot more difficult. It's going to make relying on the thermometer almost impossible. Not Well, maybe not impossible, but a lot more difficult, you know? It's not like this one change, like you were saying, man. It's not like this one change is going to make finding the ghost room super difficult. Is all of these smaller changes, like, yeah. stacking up at the end? It's, again, it's going to make it more, uh, a bit harder to find that darn ghost. I think that people are still going to rely really heavily on the thermometer, and I think rightfully so. I think that the thermometer is just only going to get more useful in a game the longer the game goes. As soon as you walk through the door into the level, the the thermometer is going to be useless. I'm too but... used to it. I, I can't let go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the first to admit I'm a thermometer. <laughs> it's, it's like my instant item, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> that is me too. Yep. So up next, on professional difficulty, due to the power starting off, the room temperatures will start at five Celsius or forty-one Fahrenheit. What do you guys think about this? Yeah, I think uh, this is this is this is interesting, right? Because last week we mentioned how on professional difficulty the power box starts in the off position, right? So this, now now the 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 dev has built on top of that. Uh, and because of these temperature changes with the power band off, it gets colder anyway. Um, it, it just kind of flows and makes sense, right? So this is, I think, a logical addition. Um, and it also, yet again, makes it even more critical that you get the power on ASAP. So someone has to be willing and dedicated and volunteer to be like the one that's like, okay, hey, I'm going to go turn on the power. You have to establish that right off the bat. But it also kind of like adds an element of your strategy because generally you try to, you know, especially in like smaller locations or even in larger locations, try to keep one person in the van every so often to look for ghost orbs, check for sanity, all that kind of stuff. Now you're going to have to have like one person keep like going in every so often to check that, but have one person go for the box, which kind of leaves you with like two hunters most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope that the I hope that the dev also adds some other element to this too. So like if you are on power box duty a lot, like if you're the dedicated power box dude or dudette, uh <laughs> then the power box bottom. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> the the, the power <laughs> The power box bottom. If you are the power box bottom, um, it needs to be made interesting, you know, because at least if you're if you're if you're on van duty and you're like checking for ghost orbs or you're checking about the objectives or anything like that, you know, at least that's somewhat interesting. There's things to look at. There's things to see. Things to do. If you're on power, if you're a power box bottom, <laughs> maybe that's not so interesting. I just had a realization though. What's that? In every game that we have played, you are the one who goes for the power box the most. <laughs> you are our power box bottom. <laughs> okay, coming up we have the thermometer refresh rate has been lowered to two seconds. Uh, it's sort of like a buff. I guess it was maybe nerfed too hard last time, and they're like trying to not make the, the uh, thermometer nerf not not that bad yeah i'm really trying to find like a happy medium like five seconds was obviously too slow and it seems like three seconds hasn't worked but like the consistent like one second update is just too fast i think they'll probably end up making it like a 2.5 kind of thing yeah, yeah i mean i i feel very meh about this change honestly because 
Um, I honestly, when I played with the, the three seconds, it felt okay. It didn't feel cumbersome. It was all right. Um, I'll it take the two seconds. It kind of to me. It kind of really? to me. It felt, yeah, it felt like clunky. I don't know. Like I just, okay. I felt like I had to, I was walking on sand. I was running on sand. That's what it felt like. Like I you're trying to run in a dream. You're running, a, you're <laughs> yeah. running in a dream. You're not getting anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how it felt like. Yeah. So I welcome this change. I hope the two seconds is a good, happy medium. Uh, I, I agree yeah. with May. I will be shocked if uh, they don't change it again. I, I, I doubt that two is going to be the final value. I think it's going to get adjusted again. If I, if I was a betting man, I also would say 2.5 seconds. All right, next up in this week's patch notes, added a server region prefix in front of the room invite code to help show what region you are in or trying to connect to. Um, if you have international friends that you play with, um, I'm sure this has been something that is a, a nice quality of life improvement for you. It is funny, there have been um, several times actually where I know, believe it or not, uh, May May does not live in the United States. I know I I, I can't believe it either, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. So you know, oftentimes we connect to uh, May's lobby, and if there's like any kind of like a hiccup or a glitch or something, and for whatever reason we can't connect, my first go to is always. Um, are you in the U.S. region? Which is funny because May never doesn't play in the U.S. region, so I don't know why I keep I asking. <laughs> I think I do out of convenience more than anything because I know like most of the people I play with are like American, so it's just like, ah, eh, just screw it. Why'd you have to say it like that? They're Americans. <laughs> so other patch notes we got this week was that. Uh, the phones in schools are now lowered. Thank and goodness. Right? Oh, like, thank God. My poor like, ears. I know. Like, on one hand, that was awesome. Because, like, you could use that pretty... Like, you're, you could be on the other side of the school and you'd be like, Oh, the ghost is over in that direction. You know, so that was kind of nice. That was kind of nice. But then, you know, your eardrums are bleeding. So it's, it's a little <laughs> bit of give or take. <laughs> I think I think the worst part is if like y'all like one of the things like you know I take the spirit book if we found the room and I'm trying to put this spirit book down and I'm like hey I'm gonna place it here right next to the phone and then it goes off I'm like reaching for my headset because it hurts you know yeah. yeah just giving you a heart attack it's not right. even a heart attack. it's just the sound it, like it's gonna sound ridiculous but it really does ring make your ears ring afterwards you're like <laughs> it was loud. It was okay. very loud, so this is very welcome change. Thank you, thank D-Niter. You. Yep, thank you so much. <laughs> Our next change is the activity monitor will now show an estimated value rather than the true value. This will prevent you from discovering EMF level 5 without using the EMF reader. So I went in and tested this myself just to see like what it looks like. And you know how sometimes EMF would read two and it would say like a constant two. Uh, well yeah. now, instead of like staying a constant number, it'll like fluctuate back and forth between like say one and two. It'll go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, so you basically need to uh, use your deduction skills and figure out what it actually is. Interesting. See, before this patch note, I had no idea that this was even a thing. I had no idea that you could discover EMF level 5 using oh, the activity monitor. Like, we talked totally about news to me. Yeah. This next one is probably very welcome if you uh, play in rando lobbies. All right. Uh, added a delay for closing the <laughs> truck door once it has been opened to prevent trolling. So what, I guess there's been a bunch of assholes that, you know, start a game and after they get in the lobby, they start a game and then they open and close the door real quick to kick everybody out. Like that is a dick move. So uh, good change on the devs part to prevent these trolls. I just want to say I play with the nicest of people. So the trolling never really gets too bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm really thankful for that. But Flashlight. Imagine... Sorry, go ahead, May. I was going to say, minus, like, public lobbies, I don't think this will be a big change for us, personally. Yeah. No, I never play in rando lobbies. I always play with friends, because I have friends. Ooh, ooh. 
but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean like for a lot of people that you know like to play you know with random folk and open public lobbies like this is gonna be a big thing for them so it's, it's good it's good and i don't know how prevalent this was because honestly like i said i don't i didn't play in random lobbies right so i don't know if this was like a super prevalent thing or if this is just something that the dev thought oh this might be a problem in the future like I, I'm, yeah. I'm i'm guessing that it probably started to become a problem so the dev had to address it i mean, I mean look go ahead man no i mean i don't know maybe this is something that other people could, could tell us you know yes mm -hmm. Did you have this problem? Leave a comment down below. Let us know, because we are clueless. We'd love to hear from you. You're welcome. Good <laughs> thinking, May May. Look at you. May May's a natural YouTuber. Hello? He is. So up next, we have the, the ghosts have an improved pathfinding when they are searching for your last location, and this stops it from checking different flaws. Yeah, so it sounds like before... Like, you could uh, be, like, hiding on the second floor of the building, and it would go check the first floor of the building in your general location, like, directly under you. So that's not good. <laughs> so yeah. that's a good thing that they fix that. Yeah, it gives the ghost better AI, which is good for the ghost. It's bad for me. I mean, <laughs> bad for our health. And, uh, yeah. and also better for the difficulty. Yep. Another yeah. difficulty adjustment. I mean, honestly, smarter ghosts... Honestly, smarter ghosts make the game scarier. Like, the more realistic the ghosts act, the scarier the game becomes again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I like that this change makes the game, like, overall more difficult on all difficulty levels, essentially, because it's, like, ghost AI, and that's across all difficulties. Yeah, it's not just restricted to being on professional or intermediate and higher. Exactly. Yeah. And then, Blue, will you get the honors of doing the not patch notes? So I have no ones. It's a, it's a beautiful cat. All right. It's, mm -hmm. I want to pet the cat. I want to love the cat. Mm -hmm. I don't know the cat's name. Is this cat within the game? Does this show up in the game? <laughs> no. I don't think so. this is, I'm pretty sure that this is Deniter's cat. And I don't think he said the name. I, I do wonder if he'll add a picture. You know, like, you got them like clippings and such, and like. Oh random right! Wouldn't that be great? So, so maybe that's something we should look for. Maybe in like when we start this week, and then like maybe go back to it next week and find it in the game. Yeah, that'd be interesting if it. I if it's not added now, he needs to add it, like for sure. It needs to be like a, a like in a picture frame in the house or something, right? I think I know what I'm doing tomorrow on ghost hunting. I think I'm gonna go look for this. <laughs> yeah, know, the ghost is there, like behind, behind. Oh, yeah. God, I'm looking for the, 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 the poltergeist is throwing objects everywhere around you. You're like, go away! <laughs> I have more important things than ghost hunting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the official Phasmophobia twi uh, Twitter account. Uh, posted this up and said that it was Phasmophobia's official mascot. And what a mascot! Look at that cute, adorable little furry. I want to pet it so bad. I, I want to give it a pet so bad. It adorable looks so cute. cat. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Blue and May, for joining me. All three of us are on Twitch, and we all three of us would super duper appreciate it if you followed us. Um, also, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Hit that notification bell here on YouTube. And uh, let us know what you thought about this week's patch notes. What was your favorite thing uh, that we went over? Le let us know down below in the comments. Uh, we'll see you again next week uh, with all the new Phasmophobia patch notes. Uh, I, the, where I am is going to look a little bit different, though, because I'm moving and the studio is all going to get torn down. <laughs> so it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little bit different, but damn it, we're doing it. So uh, it's going to be a thing. All right. See, see you next week, everyone. Bye bye. Hey everyone, before I go, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And while you're at it, go ahead and follow me over on Twitch where you can join us live and join in on the fun while it's happening. Until next time, bye bye